Okay, so now that you guys have your very rough, rough draft written, you may be looking at it and saying, I don't know what else to add. So remember, writing is a process and not necessarily a product. So you are going to take multiple steps and write multiple drafts in order to make your narrative better. One way to do this is to kind of focus on one specific strategy throughout your narrative and then moving on to the next. So then you're not overwhelmed with all these different things you're supposed to add. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is character development or developing the people in your narrative. The reason why I find this really important to start with is because if your readers don't connect with the characters in some way, or at least feel as though they're a, they're a person, they're going to be disengaged and not read your story. All I can think about, and you may or may not have seen these movies, um, are the, it, the, the movies, the Twilight series, and they were books first, and then they became movies. And I read the books, and some people are gonna hate me for saying this, but those books and movies were the worst character development I have ever read or seen on screen. I literally felt dumber after I read that book. And the reason is, is because it was 800 pages, the first book was 800 pages of Bella, the main character, going, whoa, it's me. I love this boy. Whoa, it's me. I'm not worthy, but that's all she did. So it's not that I didn't like her character because she she wanted a man. Her character had no depth. That's all I knew about her. So after reading 800 pages, the only thing I knew about this girl was that she loved this vampire named Edward. So if that character had been developed, I still might not have liked her, but at least I could understand who she was and maybe be interested. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. So what I have is my very rough draft that I did in the last demo video. And I just have a, another document open so you can see what I'm doing. Now, if you remember, I in the last video I said, after leaving school, I quickly hurried home to discuss the possibility of a shutdown with my family. And I actually didn't know what else to write then, so I made a note that said, add more here when you think of it. Okay, well, I know that I want to talk in this scene about my family and, and me and, and what we, the conversation we had. So I was thinking about it. I was thinking if I should develop my family or I should develop me. And I think this story is more about me. And I don't think that I've really talked about me as a person yet. So I think I'm going to choose to develop myself in this paragraph instead of my family. So the way that you get to know people or the way that people are characterized. And this is in life and literature. So it's the way that people speak. It's the way that people think. It's the effect. or how others view how they act and how they look. So these are the five ways that we indirectly characterize people. Um, you could see this in life. You probably judge people on the way they speak, on what they think, how other people think about that person, um, how that person acts and how they look. But this is also done, obviously, in literature. So a weak characterization would only develop one of these aspects. So in the example I gave you with Bella in the Twilight series, the only thing I knew was that she loved Edward. She didn't really do anything else. She barely talked in the entire book and the entire movie. I guess there was an effect on other people, but it was very vague. They just kind of stared at her. Act, she didn't really do anything in the first book. She kind of just stood there. And yeah, I mean, I knew what she looked like. It was just very weak because they didn't develop all of her aspects. So I'm gonna do this for myself in this 
seen. So when I went home to talk with my family after we had left school and we were possibly going to shut down, um, let's see what I was thinking. Um, well, I was really, my thoughts were everywhere. I was scattered. My thoughts were scattered. Because it was such a mind blowing idea that we would shut down the world, basically. I just, I didn't know where to go. So I was confused. I was in disbelief. This is how I was thinking, okay? All right, speak. Um, I came home and I at first was talking to my husband like an adult and I said like, holy neat beep. But my kids soon came home. And so even though I might have cursed to begin with, I quickly said things like, guys, and this is when my kids came in. I said, oh, guys, mommy and daddy are just talking. It's business talk. And so my, my language and, and the way I spoke to another adult was different than the way that I spoke with my children. I didn't want to scare them. So I may develop my dialogue or my speech with my husband a little bit more. I go, holy beep. How is this really happening? I was freaking out, I'm not gonna lie. We are all going to die. This is irrational, but it's the things I said. Did I believe we were all going to die? No, but it's what I said to my husband because I was being irrational. But then my, I, I totally switched my language because I would never say something like we're all gonna die in front of my kids. Okay. Okay, effects on others. Uh, Others view this person. So this is the hardest one. This is how other people react to me, how other people view me. So when I got home, my, my husband knows I have a tendency to uh, get excited and overreact. So at first he was like, he was rolling his eyes. Um, he... Didn't really listen to me at first. And it's because he thought I was just overreacting. But after a few days of watching the news, my husband started listening intently to what I was concerned with because he learned that I actually wasn't overreacting and that this was a really good chance that the world was going to shut down. Now, no, not everybody was gonna die, but I think he realized that I wasn't overreacting. And effects on others, well, this is huge too with my kids. If I was concerned, so would my kids. It's absorb emotions. So the effect I had, other people view me. Uh, my kids saw me as a stable force that would protect them. They weren't worried because they view me as that, you know, that mom figure, obviously. Okay, the way that I act. Um, let's see, how would I act in this situation? I came home, um, sat 
down calmly. But then I got I got up and moved and sat down calmly again. And then moved again. By showing my behaviors, you can see that I'm really trying to act calm. But I act calm, I sit down, and then I move again, and I act calm, and I sit down. But then I move again. So the fact that I'm fidgety, fidge, uh, fidgeting, shows that I'm actually not really calm. I'm just trying to give the appearance that I'm calm. How do I look? OK, well, after a long day, I look messy, worried, tired. I have bags. I had, let's say I had bags under my eyes. I hair was in a bun. And I was still wearing my corporate colors of maroon. Black. Okay, so now all right, so now I have the way that I speak in front of my husband and then in front of my kids. I have the way that I thought my thoughts were everywhere, scattered, confused, I was in disbelief the effects on other people or how other people view me. Um, my husband didn't really listen to me at first, but a few days of watching the news by uh, my husband started listening intently to what I was concerned, what I was concerned with. And you can see I have typos, we just fix them. If I was concerned, so would my kids. My kids saw me as a stable force that would protect them, how I act, and then how I look. Messy, worried, tired, bags under my eyes. Side note, that's Still how I look, ironically. So now I'm gonna come back to my rough draft and I'm gonna convert this over here. So after leaving school, I quickly hurried home to discuss the possibility of a shutdown with my family. I asked, my husband, ready? And then I'm just gonna add this. How is this really happening? We are all going to die. So obviously I have to do changes, font size and all that fun stuff, but we'll do that later. And I'm gonna take this. I said to him that I thought we are all going to die. Now there's a error here, but I'm actually gonna go over that later. Um, okay, and then I told my kids when I realized they might be listening that mommy and daddy are just talking. It's business stuff. Okay. What are my thoughts? My thoughts were everywhere. I was, now I gotta add, I was scattered, confused, and in disbelief. Okay. I'm gonna come back to this one because I think that would be a great way to 
end my characterization. I see, I, I sat down calmly, but then I got up and moved around. I sat down calmly again, and then I moved again, fidgeting. There is another grammatical error here, but we will go over that in the next video. I looked. So even though I sat calmly, I looked messy, worried, and tired. And now I'm going to come back. So I'm going to show you why. I just thought this would be a good wrap up because I talk about myself, I talk about myself, I talk about myself, and then the, re the effect on others or how other people view me is all a response to all the other types of characterization. So after I talk about what I said, what I was thinking, how I looked, how I was acting, then I'm going to wrap up with my husband, how my behaviors and all of that was having an effect on everybody else. My, uh, my husband didn't really listen to me at first, but after a few days of watching the news, my husband started listening intently to what I was concerned with. Now, this has to be developed even more, but you can see now that I've added so much more to my narrative in just a matter of 15 minutes. So now I just fix this. Okay. Look at how much to our story in just that little bit of time. So what I would do right now is pick an area in your text, maybe one person, uh, maybe yourself, maybe two people, or maybe just yourself in a couple different instances throughout your narrative. So pick two or three spots to develop either one character over, over multiple times in your narrative or develop multiple people and just do one each. But either way, develop your characters. And the easiest way to do that is to simply do what I did with the character development, uh, with the graphic organizer, with the steel method of characterization. Um, I hope this helps. If you need anything, please contact your teacher. I will be providing this document as well as the steel method to your teachers. So if you need it, ask them.